Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to the Wheatus music video Teenage Dirtbag. This video is going to be particularly relevant to you if you are studying OCR GCSE media studies as it is one of the optional set music videos on that specification currently. This music video will only ever get asked about in terms of media language, representation or audiences. So I'm going to go through all three of those in this video. The video is based around a film called Loser, which came out in 2000. Um, and basing your music video from a, around a film or having your music video be part of a film showing scenes from a film is a great way of attracting audiences of that film to your music video as well. It starred two reasonably famous actors at the time, Jason Biggs and Mina Savari, who'd been in several big teenage movies uh, in the last few years. So things like American Pie, they would have attracted quite a lot of fans. They would have been familiar to quite a lot of people. And they definitely would have added to this idea of a teen narrative for a lot of audiences. The music video opens on some stairs with a scene of a man looking a bit drunk. Obviously, it's going to be quite uh, familiar to many young audiences who may have been in similar situations before. And it definitely sets the scene of a music video that is going to have a narrative and a music video that is going to be about things that young people can relate to. There are some shots of the band Wheatus within a school hall. It's quite clear that it's a school hall. There's lots of signifiers that help us to understand this. And that establishes them as the stars of this music video, which is quite important for a music video. You can see that the band are dressed in reasonably casual clothes. These clothes were really quite fashionable at the time. Um, so it kind of represents the band as being quite casual, quite laid back, very informal, which was kind of the style for, I guess, like pop punk uh, bands at the time. The school hall adds to the narrative and adds to this focus on teen appeal. We see Jason Biggs' character um, having his bike crushed by a car and that very much sets him up as being a kind of geek nerd type character, the underdog within the narrative. And so makes him easy to identify as a kind of character type or an archetype straight away. And that helps audiences understand what's going on. We see a shot reverse shot between him and the girl and the fact that he doesn't confront her makes him seem quite shy and quite nervous. So it establishes that he, he lacks confidence. We get a very slow motion kind of beauty shot of Mina Savari here. And this slow motion really helps to make her easily identifiable as a kind of princess type character from props theory. This idea that she is clearly the love interest for Jason, it emphasizes the fact that he has a crush on her. The narrative regularly cross cuts with the performance elements of the band. And that's very conventional for music videos to keep going back and forth between the band's performance and the storyline. It helps to keep the audience engaged and it helps to promote the band and reinforce their star image. There are some very surreal shots here of the band playing music with fruit instead of instruments. This adds a surreal element to the music video, makes it feel a little bit postmodern, makes the band feel quite silly, quite immature. And again, that adds to the youth appeal. During the chorus of the song, there are these huge crowd shots, lots of people jumping up and down as though they're at a party, having fun. Um, it makes the band seem like they're very popular, very successful, that they're very adored and loved by fans. We see Jason Biggs walking down uh, stairs um, against the crowd and walking against the crowd makes him seem like he is different. He stands out. He doesn't follow the crowd. He's a little bit alternative. A lot of young people are going to be um, engaged by this. They would find this familiar, this idea that you feel alienated, that you don't feel part of the popular crowd. The tracking shots around the band allow us to see them, them playing their instruments. That is quite important in a music video, particularly in this kind of genre. Audiences often quite like seeing guitars being played, drums being played. It emphasises the band members' skills. We see Jason Biggs' character again walking down a corridor, lots of shot reverse shots between him and kind of popular kids. We see them making the recognisable loser sign on their foreheads. And again, this paints him as the underdog, somebody we should sympathise with, a victim of bullying. And it immediately is identifiable to global audiences as well, because you don't even need to use language. You're just using that sign, that symbol. And that's something that's quite familiar to people around the world. 
The low angle shot of the guys here emphasizes their power, their popularity, their success. They're playing the kind of typical jock type of characters that we often see within narratives. The kind of popular boys who are often surrounded by friends and by girls. There are lots of people patting them on the back, which again adds to this feeling that they're very popular and liked people. The crowd even parts for them to let them through, just really emphasising the fact that these guys are idolised by the people around them. We see some more shot reverse shot here between the Jason Biggs character and the Mina Suvari character, emphasising that they've got a connection, that they've kind of maybe potentially got a romantic narrative coming. He's knocked to the floor though, which again emphasises his geekiness and the track out makes him seem even more vulnerable and small within the frame. Again, emphasising his weakness in comparison to the popular guys we've just seen. The chorus of the song, again, very fast paced, very energetic, uh, you know, lots of cutting um, very regularly to add to that idea of energy and excitement. There's references to Iron Maiden here, so making intertextual references to another famous band. Iron Maiden obviously kind of predominantly f um, famous for sort of like rock metal music, a bit more alternative, um, so perhaps targeting an alternative audience and perhaps targeting a slightly older audience who would be familiar with this band. Very much linking to the social context that rock and metal has often been distrusted by mainstream media as being kind of sinful. The wide angle of Jason Biggs stood underneath the loser sign, emphasises his isolation and his vulnerability. Um, and then we cut to an even higher angle, which makes him seem even smaller and weaker. The shots of the jock characters throwing things at Jason Biggs um, really help to emphasise that they are the villains of the piece and that the audience should not like them. We see them as being mean and nasty. And it emphasises Jason Biggs as being the kind of victim or the protagonist. When Mina Savari turns away in disgust, it emphasises that she's actually a good person and it helps us as the audience um, start to like her and it emphasises that perhaps she feels sorry for the Jason Biggs character. We get some traditional prom iconography here, like the glitter ball and the suits and dresses, so we immediately understand this is a school prom. But whereas um, a lot of the other characters are wearing kind of tuxedos and beautiful glamorous dresses, Jason Biggs is wearing a kind of ruffled pastel colour tuxedo. And this is often seen as quite unfashionable at the time, which again emphasises his position as being alternative and not part of the kind of in crowd. If you listen to the lyrics of the song, the singer is singing in the first person as though he almost is the Jason Biggs character that we're seeing. And he actually narrates a lot of what is going on at the screen at the time. And these lyrics would particularly appeal to teenage boys, that feeling that they are, um, they feel maybe not good enough um, or that people think they're not good enough and that they're concerned about what girls think of them and perhaps they're worried that girls don't like them. We get a very shallow, soft focus here on Jason Biggs and Mina Savari, really emphasising the romantic nature of their connection. Suggests they're really focused on each other rather than anything else. To emphasise the romantic nature here, the pace of the editing slows right down and that helps to make it feel romantic as well. The fairy lights add to a sense that this is a dream uh, and it's a fantasy and certainly makes Mina Savari seem as though she's the fantasy uh, woman for men. The camera tracks into their faces and he actually rises up to her level. So it's this idea that he is transitioning from being the kind of geeky character to becoming a kind of more popular, successful character because she's deemed him worthy to dance with her. There's quite an ambiguous ending to this video. There's a kind of zoom in to the glitter ball and his face, which suggests, I don't know, perhaps does the glitter ball fall and hit him? Um, you know, is that why he wakes up on the stairs? Is it a dream? Was he concussed? Did it really happen? I don't know. So there's lots of enigma here and that leaves it open to interpretation for an audience. There's a clear theme of fitting in and this idea that, you know, he doesn't fit in, he wants to fit in and at the end he's hopefully trying to fit in. And this theme of trying to fit in is obviously going to be very familiar to everybody, but in particular to young people who often have issues with being concerned about fitting in when they're in their teenage years. The video shows a very heteronormative representation of, you know, teen romantic love. Um, and the video is almost exclusively white as well. So um, often uh, excluding or marginalising people from ethnic minority backgrounds is something that music videos do a lot. 
So that was my easy to understand guide to Teenage Dirtbag by Wheatus. Uh, don't forget to hit subscribe. I've got lots of other videos that might be useful for you if you're studying OCR GCSE. If you've got a particular video you would like that I don't already have, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll see what I can do.